In DC, for DC. DC Radio, 96.3 HD4 and DCRadio.gov. Welcome to the District Creators Radio Show. I'm Savvy Sharice, your host, and I'm excited to be back for another episode with today's special guest, Mr. Warice Majid, who is the founder and CEO of Yay Me and also Blueprint. Yes, ma'am. Blueprint Inc. Or, Blueprint or? Development Consultants. I love it. A Blueprint Development Consultants. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you because as I was sharing off air, I have coined you as a serial entrepreneur. I know you have a lot of entrepreneurial endeavors, some nonprofits, some for profit. So today I'm excited to talk to you about how you bring all of that together to not only provide for your family, but to serve your community. Yes. So how did you get this entrepreneurial spirit that is deep down within you? So it really comes from um, from my father. My father came to Washington, D.C. with just a sixth grade education. However, when he passed away when I was 10, uh, you know, he had a couple of stores. He had a dry cleaners. I saw him going, you know, waking up early in the morning, going to the dry cleaners. I was with him, going to meetings with him at five, six years old. So I saw it from from really from day one. So everyone says that, you know, it, it was it was meant to be. Love it. So let's start with Yay Me. <clears throat> Tell us about what your company Yay Me is, is, is about and the services that you offer. So Yay Me is a nonprofit um, servicing Washington, the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, we do a lot of things with Yay Me. Uh, basically, we follow the pathway to self-sufficiency. So we're in the neighborhood really trying to strengthen the young people and the families in the community. Uh, and uh, through that work, we work with as young as five-year-olds with our summer camps. Uh, we do things with uh, returning citizens, uh, young people in, in, the, in the neighborhoods and in the communities. Uh, we do after school programming. Like we, we literally work with the whole family mm -hmm. um, in, in the District of Columbia. I love that. Now, how do you manage when you're serving multiple populations? You know, you're working with the younger kids, with the summer camp. You're working with o older, not older. What do we call them? Young adults. Young adults. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> You're working with young adults with workforce development. Um, I know you've done some work with like justice involved youth, uh, mm -hmm. returning citizens. So how do you manage the work when it spans multiple generations in that way? I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> um, we, we we just been blessed. Um, we have a small staff. We have a dedicated staff. Um, this is really just our time now. We've been mm -hmm. doing a lot of this work. When I say for free, I mean really for free. Um, and now and I believe that we just opportunities have just really just been kind of coming from everywhere. But, um, you know, it's just it's the staff, our faith, um, family that understands what we're doing. So we putting in some long hours and we just know that, you know, it's, it's necessary. So we just we really just kind of find a way right now, to be honest with you. Now, I know mentorship is very important to the Yay Me uh, company and the Yay Me brand, and you recently launched a new mentoring program. Share some of the details about your new mentoring program. Absolutely. So, first of all, it's um, in honor of Amin Muslim, mm -hmm. who was one of my mentors, and learned a lot from him about just the game and, you know, politics, the whole nine, you know, how to stay consistent and be yourself and not losing yourself. So when he passed away this year, um, me and a friend of mine, we just thought that, you know, it would be perfect, you know, to honor him by coming up with something called Amin's Angels. I personally believe that everyone in the world should have at least two mentors. Mm -hmm. But every young person in the District of Columbia needs to have a mentor. And I think that's what's missing. Um, I know we talk about fatherless homes and mothers who may be a little bit overwhelmed with what's going on, but... I believe that mentor, that's what people meant when they said, you know, it takes a village. Mm -hmm. You know, and in, in, in that village, you got to have these strong and positive brothers and sisters to be mentors. So I mean, angels, our goal is to have a, a mentor um, to pair a, a young person in the city up with a mentor, every young person. Okay. So there's Yay Me. There's Amin's Angels, and then there's Blueprint Development Corporation. Did Consultants. Consultant. Mm -hmm. Blueprint Development Consultants. Talk about what that entails. So Blueprint uh, is basically the for-profit. The, the for 
Uh, so we do a lot of the same things that Yami does. Um, however, we also have spanned into the CBE community because mm-hmm. we uh, we have two incubator spaces where we rent space out to uh, individuals who are interested in getting businesses in the di- in the District of Columbia, specifically certified business enterprises. Um, so we do a lot of work in there. Um, we do cleaning. We have a cleaning company. We have a transportation company. We have about seven other individuals that um, are in this. These businesses spanning everywhere from um, pest control, flooring, um, landscaping. I mean, we just got a lot of small businesses in the District of Columbia that that we're kind of mentoring, mm-hmm. trying to show them, you know, what some of the struggles are going to be, and we're working with them through there. Uh, another big component of Blueprint is we do mental health. Okay. So we manage a lot of community support workers in the city. Um, we have uh, one or two therapists that kind of work with us at times. We do a lot of uh, wellness groups all throughout the city. Um, we work with a lot of men and women that are coming home from um, from um, from jail. Uh, so the returning citizens, we do a lot of work with them as well. So blueprints can be pretty pretty busy. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of how we <laughs> do things. Sounds like it. Yeah. Every time someone comes on the show and they have multiple things going on, I ask them, are they my Jamaican cousin working 10 different jobs, doing yes. 10 different things? Yeah. But I'm a firm believer in multiple streams of income. And when you hear multiple streams of income, what does that mean to you and what's the importance of it for you? Well, I just purchased a sweatshirt <laughs> from this young lady that says multiple streams of income. How I- Yes. Did you know this lady? Yes. Yes. Um, Because, I mean, but that's me, though, right? Like, I honestly, at one point in time, people would say that I had, like, business ADHD. Uh Uh-huh. Right? So I had to get to a point where it was like, each business has to be meaningful, right? Mm -hmm. And even though it seems like I'm doing a whole lot, you know, we got, like, 20 contracts, you know, two grants. So it's a lot if you Mm -hmm. think about it, right? And I had to kind of whiteboard and see, like, what can I take myself out of, right? Because mm-hmm. I really was going like I'm a, I'm a I'm a dad too now. That's mm-hmm. my number one job, mm-hmm. right? And I was like, you know what? I think I'm doing too much. I kind of felt distressed, but as I started to whiteboard things and I started to realize, like everything is like you ever heard people say, "Man, stay in your lane." Mm-hmm. Everything is in my lane. Mm-hmm. Like, yay me with the nonprofit, like. We are trainers. That's just the main thing with Yay Me. We train people, inspire people to be great, mm-hmm. right? With Blueprint, it gives us the opportunity to have some of those funds to hire some of these people once we once we get them to their that potential and right. that point of greatness. You gotta have an opportunity for them, right? Right. And I feel like that's what that's for. And then even the mental health piece. Mm-hmm. Like I know everybody I don't know nobody who don't have no mental health issues. Mm-hmm. It's just that it all depends on what your background is and like what your support systems are, you know, how it kind of reflects on, on everybody on society really, right? Definitely. So the mental health piece, the being able to hire people, even down to the C B incubators of if I get you to a point where you're ready to go into business, I can actually house you and teach you and train you and all that type of stuff. It's just important. So I really feel like everything is really in its lane. So it's kind of hard to cut anything back, but right. I'm, I'm going to figure that out. I love what you said about finding out how you can take yourself out of things, because I think it's important when you are managing multiple things to not necessarily have to be there for those things to operate. Um, you know, I've been doing a lot of studying about millionaires and people really building wealth and having multiple streams of income. And one of the key formulas is them basically buying their time back buying themselves out of what they're managing so they don't have to actually be there for it to function, whether that looks like hiring somebody or whether that looks like automating some functions so things can still roll on while you're managing those other streams of income. Listen, my plan for 2019 was buy your time back. Mm -hmm. I don't have about two more weeks to make that 2020 plan. But but that, no, that's like the most important thing to me, Mm -hmm. right, is being in control of my time. Yeah. And I think that's what real wealth is, for Mm -hmm. real. Like when you're in control of your time, I haven't been in control of my time for a while. And that's cool because I know the creators got me in this this space where Mm -hmm. I'm learning and it's been some trial and fire and all Mm -hmm. that other type of stuff. But buying my time back, 
Parent. New goal 2020. <laughs> buy my time back. I love it. I yes. love it. So you mentioned something else that's one of my favorite things to talk about on the show, and that is the connection between creativity and mental health. A lot of the entrepreneurs and creatives that come on the show, they have creative businesses and creative outlets. And I spent some time studying the connection between creativity and the positive uh, impacts that it has on our mental health. So from your standpoint, from running your businesses, which is obviously a passion of yours and something that you're you're inspired to do, how does that impact your mental health? Wow. Positive or negative? I was actually going to ask you from, because I heard a little bit of you saying through navigating how that has impacted you. So let's start on the, let's start with how, how does running your business impact your mental health on a negative aspect, but then also how does it impact your mental health on a positive? Okay. So the negative aspect and it's just because it's it's a drain, right? Mm-hmm. Like the type of work that we do, like we're in the business of repairing broken people most of the time. Right. That takes a toll on you. Mm-hmm. You take that stuff home. Um, you know, there's no shut off. There's, right. you know, I wish I could see a 24 hour work day. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I wake up, I go to sleep. I dream about like ways to repair people. Mm-hmm. It's scary. Mm-hmm. So that is a form of burnout. Yeah. Um, you know, I've gone on vacation you know, I do violence intervention work as well. So I've gone on vacation and my phone went off so many times that I had to like cut it off because mm-hmm. every time it would buzz, it means someone was like getting shot or right. getting killed or there was something else crazy was happening. And mm-hmm. I was just realizing like, you know what? I'm not even on vacation right now. Like right. I was not relaxed. So the work takes a toll on me. Mm-hmm. And then I'm starting to learn how to kind of balance that out. You know, got my little system that I'm trying to implement. Mm-hmm. So that's the negative. The positive is almost similar, though. The fact that you are able to assist somebody, right? Um, the fact that somebody is just so... these, these the, the, the men and the women that we deal with, like, they... When they find unconditional love, and that's what we provide, like, it is amazing. Mm-hmm. And that does something great to your soul, to right. your body, which actually impacts your mental health mm-hmm. as well. Um, and then just the fact that, you know... Being, I mean, it's, it's a struggle, but, you know, I love the fact that I know I'm in control of what's going on. Yeah. That helps me as well. You know what I mean? I make decisions. I can always tell also, like, if I don't give 150%, mm-hmm. then I know why. So I can always blame me for, like, not getting the job done. Right. But when I do it, the creator every time has looked out for me. And that, that impacts my mental health in a positive way. Love that. What would you say is the biggest lesson that you've learned as a seasoned entrepreneur about business? Oh, that's the easiest question in the world. <laughs> there are three letters that you don't mess with. One got an I, the R, <laughs> and the last is an S. Okay. <laughs> Pay them, right? Invest in your business, mm-hmm. right? Don't sit around out here and you don't have an accountant. Mm-hmm. Right. You don't have a game plan. You don't have an HR plan. Right. You don't have a succession plan. You mm-hmm. don't. This, this is your business. Right. right. The first business that you are in charge of is yourself. And you're going to take care of yourself. You got to take care of the business as well. And you got to invest in the business. It's too many, especially, especially African-Americans. Like we get these businesses, we get these contracts. We forget it's a business. Yeah. Invest in yourself. Invest in your business. Follow up question based on that and invest in oftentimes newer entrepreneurs struggle with setting their price points, whether it's for a product, whether it's for a service or whether they're, you know, going after a contract to provide services. What are your what advice would you give to new entrepreneurs around setting their price points for their products and services? Number one, no is not a bad answer. No is healthy. Sometimes you have to say no. Right. Um, I kind of. I guess I'm, I was in a good space. And let me tell you right now, with the nonprofit, mm-hmm. it was hard for me because I felt like I was charging you to do something that I would have done anyways. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And like, I didn't want to be labeled as like no poverty, poverty pimp. I know you hate that word. <laughs> um, but um, I, I, I really felt like sometimes like I was trying to my best and I was like, I, you know, I know I'm doing, a, doing great work and all this type of stuff, but I can't charge you this. Right. And then I started to realize, like, okay, other people were coming in and charging, like, 10 times more than uh-huh. this, right? So that's when I realized, like, on the nonprofit side, right, I'm not going to short myself. Mm-hmm. Now, the for-profit side was different because I did a lot of research and I have a lot of mentors that are doing that type of work. Okay. So I'm not coming in with a blank slate. 
I have people actually telling me like how to set my price point and stuff like that. But know your worth though. Mm -hmm. Know your worth. How does social media impact your business? Well, if it does, it just impacts it because I just got on social media. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a little bit of a dinosaur. Welcome yes. to the wonderful world yes. of social media. Yes, I was, you know, DM. <laughs> I thought people was cussing me out, but now I know what it means. <laughs> so, um, it, but it, it listen in this day and age, you have to be on social media, mm-hmm. right? You have to take advantage of it. Um, for the for-profit side, it is the best advertising ever. Like I said, I'm a dinosaur, so I remember coming up in the 90s, and I've been in business literally longer than most people even know. Mm-hmm. I just wasn't very successful at mm-hmm. it. If I had some of the things that I had child disposal now, as far as advertising, it's no telling where I would be right now. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm loving social media. Um, you know, just be careful with it. Understand that it's a business. It's advertising for your business. It it's brand development, and you can mess that up easily. Definitely. So what are your ultimate goals for your business? <clears throat> sis, I'm sorry. Let me put that S on there. Right. right. <laughs> for your businesses. That they are self-sustainable. Okay. Each and every last one of them. Going back to buying your time back. Yes. Having a succession plan. Yes. Yes. And I want to be able to hire so many individuals that, um, I mean, they going to want them to call me the new DOS. I love it. I love it. What does the saying collaboration over competition mean to you? Mm, you know, that's powerful. And and we, we're actually collaborating on a couple of efforts right now. So I think mainly it just means uh, my brother said something. He said, would you rather have 100 percent of a dollar or 10 percent of a million? Right. And at the time, of course, with me, with the mindset I had, I said 100 percent of the dollar. Uh-huh. I want my whole dollar. He said, no. Nah. And that's why I first learned about collaboration. This was 20 years ago. Uh-huh. And basically 10 people helping you get to that million dollars, that means you got nine more people whose ideas, whose time you can use and everything else. And hey, a hundred thousand dollars is way more than a dollar last I checked. You get that dollar, you put in a hundred percent of the time just Mm -hmm. to get that dollar. And it really doesn't work very well in business. So collaboration is key. So you have the fortunate um, experience and opportunity to work independently for yourself 100 percent of the time. Right. But there are a lot of people who are in full time jobs, you know, because they need the full time job to be able to take care of their responsibilities, manage their lifestyles, pay their mortgages and such. But their full time jobs are misaligned from their true passion, from their entrepreneurial pursuits and what they want to do. Ultimately, what advice do you have for individuals who find themselves in that scenario where they're working a full time job to make ends meet, but it's not really what they want to do to fulfill their passions and purpose? So I'm going to tell you right now, like, first of all, I understand, right? And I don't judge people for doing that. However, <clears throat> one thing is inevitable and that we're all going to leave this earth, right? Mm-hmm. If you know, like, this was my plan B, right? I wanted it to be my plan A, but it was my plan B. But I knew that I was not happy working for anybody. I've only had two jobs my whole life mm-hmm. that weren't from myself or my family, right? And it probably for maybe two years or maybe three years out of my whole life. Mm -hmm. I've always um, been able to provide for myself. So, but if you want to do it, go so hard for that. Because if you're willing to go 35, 40 years to work for someone else, Mm -hmm. the most depressing thing in the morning for me when I worked down at the Navy Yard was I used to see like five to 10,000 people coming off of the subway and they would like migrate to the, uh, to the um the Starbucks uh-huh. every day uh-huh. and then go right into the Department of Transportation. Mm-hmm. And they did that same thing every, every day. day. I mean, it was so depressing to me. Ooh, can you imagine it? I think about, can you imagine if there was like a time lapse video and you could just watch that for like a whole year, just watching people get off, on, off, it on. It is so depressing. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was so depressing because I'm looking and I'm like, all of these people had a dream one day. Mm-hmm. And then somehow somebody say, hey, I'm going to give you this amount of money. You're going to be able to pay your bills. And that's going to be it. Like, I, I just, it's it's so much that this world has to offer, right? And I feel like most of the people that's going to fulfill that are the people that got off the train, went to Starbucks, and then went into their place of business every day I and know. just decided that's cool. 
So what do we do? What do we do to make it more attainable? I think there's a big fear factor in the unknowns of entrepreneurship. And I know you could speak to some of those unknowns when you're invoicing people and you're waiting for the invoice to come Mm -hmm. in or it's not that security of knowing I worked my 40 hours this week. I have my 80 hours for this pay period. And I know that check is going to hit the direct deposit. So how how has that been for you navigating the financial ups and downs of any bit that any business goes through well it's discipline um it's surrounding yourself with enough mentors and individuals who've already made those mistakes mm-hmm. that's what, blueprint it's, it's in the, the name blueprint. of the company i like but the blueprint's already out here for, i don't care what that's like i said with social media and all of these things that are just this the access that people have right now the only reason that your business is not going to be successful if you don't give 150%. Oh, I was I was going to cut off. No, 150%. <laughs> because we give 150% when we're working in these jobs forever. Yes. You know, job security isn't it. It's that, not a thing. It's not. <laughs> anything can happen. Market can crash. Anything can happen. Mm-hmm. And you don't have that job anymore. You know what I mean? Administrations you, change. Yes. Management changes. And you can't look back and say, oh, I gave you guys 150% this year. And we're like, yeah, thank you. Thanks. That's it. <laughs> so go after your dream, give it 150%. Don't go out there and quit your job and call me tomorrow. Say, listen, Dr. Majee said quit the job. Give me a... No, nah, I ain't say all that. <laughs> However, what I'm saying is give it 150%. Pursue your dreams. Then you get to wake up every day feeling like you never had to go to work again. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't beat that. And you'll yeah. be so surprised at what's going to happen when you give the 150%. But don't do it unless you're willing to give 150%. 150%. Yes. I'm clear. So if you were to help someone to build an entrepreneurial toolbox <clears throat> and they had five tools in their toolbox, what would you encourage them to put in there? Faith. Mm-hmm. Respect your family because you're going to need them. Um, be willing to sacrifice. That would be the third thing. Um, invest in your business, in yourself and in your business. Mm-hmm. Those would be four. And the fifth one will probably be patience. Patience. Be patient. Mm -hmm. I like that. Now, if you are going to make a beverage for success, a success beverage, right? So you mix this beverage and then when you drink it, you're guaranteed to have entrepreneurial success. What three ingredients would be in the beverage? Oh, my God. Goodness, what's going on with these questions? Yeah, that one was hard. I, I, was, I had to think about the last one. And you one. did good. That's that's, <laughs> what, let me tell you, we have some of the same ingredients, though, mm-hmm. um, because your smoothie definitely has to have patience in it. Mm-hmm. Um, I love you, that you made it a smoothie. Yes, definitely, definitely a smoothie. Shout out to the smoothie places. Um, so it's definitely going to have to have um, patience. It's going to have to have uh, resilience. Mm-hmm. And mm, the third thing will probably be passion. Passion. Yes, passion. Yes, the passion smoothie. I love it. Yes, I love it. Yes. I love it. The passion entrepreneurial smoothie. Yes. You heard it here first. <laughs> hmm So last question on the business tip. What advice would you give to entrepreneurs who are still in that building stage and they have not really seen the fruits of their labor, right? So the person who's... They have the full time job. They're building the business overnight. They're selling their products and services, but they still haven't garnered the level of success that they're looking to receive, even though they've put time and skin in the game. What advice would you give to that entrepreneur? Well, first of all, all depending on how long they've been doing that, mm-hmm. I'm going to say that maybe that's not your passion. Mm-hmm. Um, it's nothing wrong with working, right? This is this game is not for everyone. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's just the honest Let's to God be truth. Clear about that. Yes, <laughs> and it may be time for you to do something else. Mm-hmm. Like if you say, you know, my passion is, you know, in cleaning or having a nonprofit and serving whatever, and you realize that's not getting off. Maybe your passion is something else. Maybe you need to learn how to paint or find find <laughs> something to do. Right? Yeah. Pray about it, figure it out, and realize that some it might not be for you. Yeah. So to me, what you're talking about is having to make like pivots and switches Mm -hmm. and adjustments. And I know that can be uncomfortable for people. Have you experienced that in your journey when you had to kind of pivot to something that you thought was going to be the thing and then you turn 
and went in another direction? Yeah, I mean, I've pretty much been on this, uh, you know, this nonprofit and serving people pretty much the whole time. Um, to be honest with you, I actually tried to pivot and do something else. And God was like, eh, Come you back. turn. <laughs> right? <laughs> to be honest with you, right? And so and that's, I'm, I'm glad you say that, too. Do not get into this to chase money, mm-hmm. right? Money is like the byproduct, right? It happens. It's something that's great. Everyone needs it. Don't get me wrong. but um, And I've really, really learned this a Honestly, like a couple of weeks ago, things like two weeks ago, when someone just kept saying, why, why, why? They weren't even talking to me, but they were talking to me. Mm -hmm. Know why you're doing this, right? Know what your love is. Because if it's just money, I promise you, you will not be successful. And if you are financially successful, you will not be happy. Mm -hmm. It's just not, you cannot get into this just for for the money. money. It's a byproduct. It is a byproduct. I love that. All right, well, what we're about to do now is play a really fun game that I came up with for the show. It's called Hashtag DC or Nothing. It pays homage to Mr. Tony Lewis Jr., who is the creator of the DC or Nothing hashtag and really honors and celebrates Washington, Washington, DC, and Washingtonians. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions you have to answer with a person, place, or thing only in the District of Columbia. You ready? Yes, ma'am. All right. So, DC or nothing, name the best place in the city to see the best views of the city. Whoa. <laughs> best place in the city. Oh, it's, it's somewhere on the south side, though. Let Gotta me tell you be. something. The south side has the best views uh-huh. of the city. So, probably something, you know, on uh, Hilltop, something Hilltop. like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with Road, something like that. Panorama yeah, Road. Yeah, in that area right there. Okay. Yes. All right. So let's let's take it to a different part of the city. You are going out for date night downtown. Mm-hmm. Nice white tablecloth, black little black dress date night. Where are you going? Oh, these days I'm going to the waterfront. Okay. Oh, the waterfront is so sexy. You it might is. forget that you are even in DC. <laughs> Definitely going to the waterfront. It is. It is. Well, since you, you're there, you kind of took the wind out of my next question. Um, but as a seafood lover, where is the best place in the city to get the best crab cake? <sighs> DC. So listen, when they redid the wharf, I mean, I got to tell you. You're like, upset. Yes. <laughs> I'm very upset because they had the best crab cake down there with my special jumbo shrimp. I'm getting hungry thinking about it. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm on a mission. And crab cake, is that's my favorite dish, uh-huh. hands down. Anywhere I go in the country, in the world, if you have a crab cake, I'm going to try it just uh-huh. to see. So we, we we slipping right now. We got to go on a D.C. crab cake we, tour. I'm with that. We'll have some auditions I, for it. the best crab I'm cake in the city. I'm with it. Because <laughs> Halftime had it, but Halftime closed down. So you know, I was on 8th Street. So I don't I don't know no more. All right. Being, the, being as though you're a super dad, you pride yourself on being a dad, name a place to, in the city where you would take your kids for a fun Saturday afternoon out. <laughs> oh, Grandma's house. <laughs> what <laughs> about that? Free food? <laughs> <laughs> Babysitter, if I want to leave them, no question. And they have a ball over there. I love it. What, pa- what part of the city is Grandma's uh, House? Located? Northeast. <laughs> Northeast. Yes. Shout out to Grandma's yeah, House in Northeast. Shout out to River Turns. We'll be over there. I hope she ain't here now. You hear me? I'm coming. <laughs> Dr. Majee, thank you so much for being a guest on the show today, sharing your expertise. Let us know how we can keep up with you online and um, on social media. Absolutely. So www.yayme.org or www.blueprintdevelopmentconsultants. Um, so please just hit us up on as far as the social media. You know, I'm still so green to it. What I is know. it? Is it's it okay. Just, is it's just yay me DC. DC. Yay me DC. DC. There you yeah, go. Yeah. And I don't run it. Go so don't follow get him. He, he's yeah. new here. I'm new. Yes. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> me. Welcome <laughs> me. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate you. Thank you, Queen. Appreciate it. In DC for DC. DC Radio 96.3 HD4 and DCRadio.gov.